Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Are you able to do an Elmer Fudd impersonation? Yeah, sure. Um, it was like, um, <clears throat> oh, wow. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> That's awesome. You you have it all almost. Well, every one of those great voices had some speech impediment. He couldn't pronounce the weather up properly. <laughs> and then, of course, Porky Pig had the stammer, you know. <clears throat> they said that uh, when the original guy who did Porky Pig before Mel Blank joined um, was a real stutterer, like in real life. And uh, and they used to record on film in those days before tape was invented. And he used to waste so much expensive raw film by getting stuck on, 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 on certain, so they they needed to hire Mel Blank because he could control a phony stutter. So that's that's where that great in the Porky really was uh, his first famous voice because uh, you know uh, it was it was that joke of trying to say something then substituting another word. So it was like. Uh, Oh, in the uh, fix it job, I'm the president of the year. Uh, I'm the vice president of the uh, year. I'm the treasurer. Uh, I sweep up the place. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Are we, they, yeah. they then sped okay. that voice a little bit mechanically to make it even higher pitched. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what was your reaction when you were told your voices for Diesel 10 wouldn't be accepted? Uh, I I was I just said oh that's a pity and then I just moved on really because I think when you're in this game so many times as I say you'll get replaced even on commercials you know a client might say oh yeah no that's a clever voice but no we we let's replace him we really want just a straight announcer you know so it happens so often it was just like half of the course so it's just the way the business is and um, the only the only thing would be that in that instance, I guess I was a little disappointed simply because it was a feature film and it would have been nice to be associated with that. But c'est la vie, these things happen. I, I stayed as busy as busy as I ever was for several years after that, so it didn't hurt me. <laughs> and to be honest, I, I, I sometimes wonder if sometimes they overcorrect things. Who knows if they'd released all of us original voices, it might have been just as big a success. I just don't know. You, nobody can ever say. It would right. be nice if they could restore all of our stuff and see it, see it like an alternate version. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like maybe there could be an adult version of Thomas and a young version. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I can imagine on the DVD it would say, warning. Not for kids under thirteen, and then the other yeah, one probably, be, and then the other yeah, one would be yeah. kid version. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Now, if you, if, you, if you, I should also so just plug um, the um, let's see, uh, if any of your fans out there would like to read more about Rocky and Bullwinkle, there is that book I mentioned, The Moose That Roared. Uh, I don't have a copy of that, but I have written a new book that's come out called. Cartoon Voices of the Golden Age, which is this, and it's um, it's a history of all the behind the scenes stuff of how Mel Blanc got established and all the the greats. So it's it's more of a, a book for animation historians in one sense. But uh, but I just thought I'd do a little plug, just in case any of your uh, podcast followers uh, might say, "Oh, that's straight up my street." There's a there's a Christmas present for the cartoon buff in my life. <laughs> Definitely. I want a copy for sure. I'll buy one after this. Well, it's Amazon. <laughs> it's on Amazon and it's also on Bear Manor Media, which does a lot of books for people with our interests. Great. I mean, let me ask you let me ask you a question, Doug. Uh, this this podcast of yours, does it cover every subject under the sun or is it more geared towards vintage showbiz or it's focused on a lot of things. Like uh -huh. it's about normal people and 
that you've not yeah. heard of. And it's, we focus on mental health and anti-bullying mm -hmm. and suicide prevention, equine therapy, women's issues, just virtually right. any causes that are positive. And we try, oh, that's to, great. we try to use people's journeys to right. bring positivity. Yes, I, I remember years before um, we had the platforms to do all of these issues you're talking about. Uh, and when I was, gee, I guess I was in my late 20s, uh, but I'd already been in the business for a while. So people knew about me, but they used to, the equivalent of what you're doing, they, they'd get people like me to go to high schools and speak to a class about positivity and making it. And if you ever feel that, you know, you're not going to make it, just look, listen to my story. I never thought I'd make it, blah, blah. And uh, I guess in those days, that was the way you did it. But now, of course, with technology and all that, there's so many other ways to to address a lot of these um, issues that were, well, they were closeted and they were hidden away for so long, you know. This really has become the century where, where so much more positively does come out into the open and, um what I suppose what you're saying is that people used to be scared to discuss certain issues and now it's uh, far more healthy. Yes. It's far yes. more healthy and also mm. people feared it in large part yeah. because they were afraid they would be seen as weak. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. Or, or just, well, maybe not even weak, just different. And, and that always scares a lot of the more insecure macho types who used to make life miserable if you were different. Okay, even Even to the extent of of being a, a nut about comics and all of those things that I was, you'd always have the school bullies who didn't get it saying, Oh, what are you a sissy boy? Or <laughs> whatever expression they used to use. <laughs> so I've, I've been through a bit of that, you know, just because you have some odd, odd interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. We've yeah. brought on some people even from the animation industry onto our channel ah, really? before as well. We have the producer of beauty and the beast, the producer of Disney's Pocahontas and the Prince wow. of Egypt. Yeah. Mm. Is that John Musker and Ron Clements and people like that? I'm trying to think of the names. There's Baker Bloodworth and there's Oh yeah. Uh, and there's also uh Penny Finkelman Cox who is involved yeah. in Prince of Egypt and Steve. Right. Hickman. Yeah, they were all, I guess, from the nineties, weren't they? That those titles. Yeah, they're nineteen nineties yeah. films and that's yeah, right. Done a little bit differently than recent animations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, a lot of a, a lot of stuff also, I suppose, is um, just the sign of the times and the the galloping pace of technology these days. You know, where there wasn't the 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 ability to to do everything from Photoshop to even more sophisticated things now, where people can. They, I mean, somebody said um, recently that uh, even twenty years ago it was hard to get funding for a short film or an independent film. And now the quality of the picture you can take on your phone is so much better than that used to be uh, to get a, a crew in with, a, <laughs> with what existed then. Yeah. Especially with the iPhone and the iPhone mm. cameras, they're just really good pictures and film on there. Yeah. And, I th and no doubt they're going to keep getting better too. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've seen the evolution of technology as well, because I'm one of the few people left that can say that he grew up during the time of VHS and then the right. had by Junior Explorer, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I predate you. I can remember trying to explain reel-to-reel -reel audio tape to people, <laughs> <laughs> which was pre-cassettes, you know, so pre-CD. Um, but, yeah, I, I was... Uh, I was a VHS beta beta uh, uptaker way back in the first days of uh, home recording because when you were such a, a showbiz buff that I was uh, in the days before that, you used to wish in your in your secret uh, fantasy that somebody would invent a way to record pictures off the TV. And when it finally came along, I said, they did it. They actually did. <laughs> sort of reminds me of that Willy Wonka scene yes. with a large camera and then being sent by television as a human. That's right. Yes, I remember that so long ago. Yeah. Was that the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, it's both of yeah. them, but it comes down yeah. to the same thing, which is a prideful right. kid and all that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. But um, no, I think I think it's a it's a great podcast that you've got. Sounds terrific. Have Thank you been you. doing it for a couple of years at least? I've been doing it since uh, 2020, but I did 
do uh, previous interviews for a racing platform, mm -hmm. a motorsports platform I'm part of. All oh, right. Yes. right. Terrific. Yeah. And then R&U was conceived by my good friend, Andy McPhee, which was inspired by my journey. It was inspired by my journey. And mm -hmm. Andy's normally the co-host on these things, but it's just tonight we have Lisa. Oh, I'm happy to speak to Lisa and yourself. Very enjoyable. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you much. And uh, yeah, it was inspired by my journey because I went from being over really overweight. I was almost, mm -hmm. I was like 300 plus pounds from a soda right. addiction I had for years, but I quit right. the addiction and lost some weight. And then I, then I was making progress in other areas of my life. And so what started out as a one person interview between me and Andy turned into mm -hmm. RU. Mm -hmm.